This lesson is going to continue our discussion of third declension nouns. Uh, these nouns are all going to have a stem that ends in tau. And remember, you find the stem from the genitive. Right? You take the genitive singular and you subtract the omicron sigma. Right? And what's left is going to be the stem. And that stem will end in a tau. But what precedes it is very important. Uh, it will either be a new tau or a kappa tau. We're going to take a look first at the nouns that end in kappa tau, and we'll find that these are uh, really pretty pretty normal, and uh, you'll be able to decline them easily. Uh, those stems that end in new tau, like I've been saying before, the date of plural will give you a little bit of uh, fits and starts in the beginning, uh, but once you figure out what's going on, it should be no problem. And then the vocative singular will be a little strange. Uh, but these are going to be the two cases of stems that end in new tau that will be uh, odd to you, but shouldn't give you any real problem. So let's take a look at, at them. First, stems that end in kappa tau, like hey nukes, night. Hey nukes, te snuktos. So there's our stem, nukt, and to this we're going to add our endings. And just like with uh, other third declension nouns, if it's monosyllabic, in the uh, nominative and accusative, the accent will be on the, on the only on the first syllable. The nominative and accusative, nuktes, nuktas, but on the genitive and dative, it'll be on the last syllable. So hey nux, te nuktos, te nukti, te nukta, and o nux vocative. Right? Nothing other than out of the usual here. So our endings, as we'd expect. And in the plural, hi nuktes, ton nukton. Here in our dative plural, tais nuxi. So actually, it's going to act, act very much like stems that end in just kappa. As the kappa tau sigma, add those together, and we're going to get a xi. And then tas nuktas, back to normal, and o nuktes. So, stems that end in kappa tau, nothing for you to worry about. Treat them as if they just end in kappa. Now, if that stem ends in nu tau, some different things happen. So, we'll start with hogigas, giant. Uh, you'll notice our, our word gigantic uh, is, is derived from this. So, hogigas, two gigantos, right? the accent is going to be persistent. Our stem is gigant, to giganti, dative, ton giganta. Right, that's all perfectly normal. Now the vocative singular, as I mentioned, is going to be a little strange. It's going to be our stem without the tau. So gigan. That's what's going on here. This is our stem. It's very much like when we had first declension masculines. Remember the uh, the vocative for say young man was. Neania, right? There's our stem, not neanias. Right? So, o gigan, and then in the plural, hoi gigantes, ton giganton, perfectly normal in our nominative and genitive, uh, genitive plural. But then what happens here in the dative, our dative plural, tois gigasin. And you'll, you'll notice the new and tau has completely dropped out altogether. So when stems that end in new tau, in the dative plural, the stem drops out. And something else happens. This alpha, which in all of these other cases was short, becomes long. So there's an idea called compensatory lengthening. We've lost two consonants, two consonants which would have rendered that long for the purposes of poetry. It's going to stay long even though we lose them. So gigasin, tus gigantas, o gigantes. So uh, that's a pretty straightforward other than our vocative singular and our dative plural. Let's take a look at one other one because new tau, here we have alpha new tau. Let's erase our writing here and take a look at one other noun. Uh, pen. 
Hogeron, old man. Our English word gerontology comes from this. So, Hogeron, to gerontos. Right, so we have our stem and our endings. To geronti, ton geronta, perfectly normal in the singular. And our vocative singular is the stem without the tau. So just like ogigon, here we have ogeron. This is only the case in stems that end in new tau. And then we have hoi gerontes, ton geronten. And then our dative, plural, tois gerusi. Here it's very obvious to see what's happened. The new tau has dropped out, and we've lengthened that omicron. So this is, again, that compensatory lengthening. It doesn't become an omega, it becomes an u, omicron upsilon. Gerusin, tus gerontas, o gerontas. So again, the dative plural is the, the sticking point for the third declension nouns, uh, but it shouldn't be excessively problematic for you. One last thing. You'll notice with these stems that end in Omicron Nu Tau that the date of plural looks an awful lot like a third person plural verb. Be careful of that. Uh, these are not verbs, these are dative nouns. Uh, two ways to help you with this. First, a verb will never have an article. And second, the stem here, the stem happens to be a noun stem, not a verb stem. So those are the two ways to help you distinguish between a dative plural and a third person plural present active indicative.